Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We head straight to a first major conversation where we look at women's participation uh, in science and technology. African women, and of course Niger is not left out in all of this, following the need to achieve full and equal access to and participation in science for women and girls and further achieve gender equality and empowerment of women and girls. The United Nations General Assembly adopted a slash res slash 70 slash 2112 declaring 11th of february international day of the girl child and to join the conversation this morning is professor omola de okwa uh, she's the president of organization of women in science for the developing world in lasso it's good to have you join us professor omola de okwa thanks for having me Okay, so, so let's start with it, uh, being that this day has actually, it's a global event as we speak now. What is the significance of this day uh, and what does this mean for us as a country and as a continent? Well, today is a very important day globally and also uh, in Nigeria because uh, Nigeria is in Africa and the African women and girls have been underrepresented in STEM, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. If you go to most universities in Nigeria, you see few girls in engineering class, mathematics, and even computer science. And uh, the aim of the International Day is to uh, uh, achieve gender balance, because science and gender equality are both vital for the achievement of internationally agreed development goals which include the 2030 agenda for sustainable development women and girls have not been participating well in stem when compared to men so in, uh, in order to achieve this full participation of women uh, the united nations uh 20, in 2015 uh, december 22 inaugurated this international day of women and girls in science and Nigeria should not be left out. Interesting, um, uh, you know, talking about the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. And uh, um, you've rightly pointed out and given us uh, a bit of a, a statistic or uh, a picture of the situation, madam, that um, women and girls are underrepresented when it comes to STEM um, in, in Nigeria. Why is that the case? Well, this starts right from uh, the scenes on certain uh, discipline as male oriented and certain discipline as female oriented. For example, teaching and nursing. You find 80% of the workforce are women. But we also have young girls that are interested in going into engineering and what we see as male related job. And the situation is very bad in Nigeria because right from uh, right from the home, we see parents uh, discriminating between their male child and uh, girl child, which is not supposed to be so because a male child is unique and a, a girl child is also unique. So uh, they should not, if a girl child says she wants to go to be a pilot, they should, nothing should stop the parents for, uh, of no supporting that girl child. So it should be starts right from the home. We should encourage our girl child when they want to go into certain discipline that we feel they are men oriented. And that will help us to achieve gender, gender equality and empowerment of women and girls. Because women and girls are agents of change. Are you, are, are you, are you saying that um, in, in Nigeria today, that, that, that people feel, and parents in particular, feel that um, um, certain fields in, in science uh, are strictly for men? You, know, you talked about engineering. Uh, you talked about um, aviation, in, in, for instance, being a pilot. Um, is, is it much of an issue now, parents having their, their female, their daughters, you know, going into, uh, into aviation to be pilots? Do parents really start, you know, stop their children from going there? Or the kids who want to be engineers, is it seen as a male-dominated field, maybe a mechanical or um, a chemical engineer? You know, do parents, is that, a, is that a, a thing in Nigeria, that parents don't want their kids to become engineers if they are, if they are females or to become pilots if they are females? Is that really a thing? Yes, yes, from statistics. No, the male, male child is always encouraged to go towards certain discipline. 
why the female child is uh, correct to go towards certain risky, but it shouldn't be so. If there's nothing wrong, if a girl child wants to be an engineer, so we should support them. That's what I'm saying. We should support them. If a girl child wants to go into a, a discipline with feelings, there are more males there. We should try to support them right from uh, right from uh, inception, and that will lead to gender balance and gender equality because. Uh, Women, uh, women do better in so many fields. And that is why today we are having more male Nobel laureates. 97% of Nobel laureates have been males, Why only 3% are females. That is a very wide gap. So it starts right from the home. We should encourage, of course, the interest will come from the dead child, but we should nurture it and encourage them. Okay, so um, let's also look at the fact that, you know, over the past years, 15 and above, uh, you have the global community making a lot of efforts and inspiring and engaging women and girls in science. But the concern is still the same as they're still underrepresented. What could still be the factor? I know, yes, that you have talked about, uh, you know, the issue of family involvement, but let's even look at this effort that's been made. It's over a decade plus and uh, we're still where we are. So what, what could be responsible for the under-representation? Like I said, it's all boils down to gender discrimination. Uh, the, this uh, is very, uh, it's a very serious problem in Africa. Gender discrimination, we should give uh, girls, for example, a man has a limited income, we prefer to send a male child to school. Why, why the girl child is left to stay at home. So we should give girls and women equal opportunities like men. And uh, even the women themselves, women themselves are the culprits discriminating between their male child and the female child. So, and the women that are ready in STEM should be role models to girls in STEM. So when they see other women as a sheep, that will encourage uh, uh, the parents of the girl child and the girl child them, themselves. So, and we should improve the STEM education and support uh, our girls at an early age. And also, uh, there should be more, more research grants and more funds for women that want to go into STEM. Mm. Interesting. Okay, so, uh, all right, just, just before I let, you know, Kofi come in now, uh, let's also ask, are there policy direction, I mean, in Nigeria now, talking about the, uh, the involvement of girls and of course, you know, uh, women in science and uh, technology, mathematics, among others. Uh, do you think that there's a policy direction to that effect, encouraging women's participation in science and technology? Professor Omolade Okoa, can you hear me? Yes, there is. That's why we have Minister of Women Affairs. That's why we have uh, Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. So that's it. That's why we have the Minister of Women Affairs and the association that I belong to, Organization of Women in Science for the Developing World. It's actually an international organization that is uh, as a branch in every university in Nigeria. The purpose is to encourage our young girls, you know, by mentor, not only the girls, but also, uh, 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 okay, we, we seem to be having some, oh, some network challenges. Madam, are you there, please? Can you hear us? That should encourage to participate in our. I can hear you. Okay, fantastic. Fantastic. M M uh, we hear that, you know, I mean, tell us more about the, the importance and the benefits of, to the economy, um, not just in Nigeria, but around the world, of having more women and equal representation of the, of the genders in, um, in, in, this, in the field of science. Because we, we're talking about the 2023 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Some talk about the Sustainable Development Goals, and I'm told that we have uh, lost contact with, um, with our guest, uh, Professor Omolade you know, but it's 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 a very important uh, um, field, science. You know, in today's world, everything in life is being made easy uh, with the uh, employment of science, and and we can also say technology 
you know, um, and um, it's it's really sad to hear, you know, from our guest who is a um, an expert expert in the field that uh, women are highly underrepresented when it comes to. Um, science, you know, and she even talked about the Nobel Prize, you know, um, that 97% that of those who win are men, and she's not, and that this is not because men are more intelligent than women, this is simply because we don't have enough women in the field, and when it comes to Africa, um, part of the problem would be that our uh, girls are being dissuaded from engaging in what is what may be considered masculine field, and that's really worrying, you know, and that's really worrying. Um, and, and I think it's important the kind of work that this her group is doing, you know, even the United Nations coming with such a day for awareness to be created that girls can get into scientific fields that may be considered to be male dominated and do well. We shouldn't stop girls from getting into these these fields. But that's one hand. It's like the, the law, you have two hands. The other hand is also the interest, like she has just said, of our girls and women in science, you know, globally even, not just in terms of girls. The interest in the sciences may, may be waning, you know. How many people want to go into school to study, um, you know, um, um, mathematics and all those kind of things, you know. But we, here we have our guest back. Um, Professor Molade Okoa, can you hear us, please? Yes, I can hear you. All right. Uh, we're just uh, trying to ask final from you, what's the importance um, of of women um, having a greater participation and you know being involved in the field of science to our economy and also to the achievement of the sustainable development goals or the 2023 agenda for sustainable development well it is very important because when women participate in uh, in science first that we achieve uh, gender equality and there'll be empowerment of women and girls and you know that uh, more than half of the world population are women. And so that is why uh, women, uh, women need to be recognized, not only as beneficiaries, but as agents of change. Women are good managers. So when it comes to uh, um, STEM, women are also good managers. The few women we even have who are doing very well in their different areas. And uh, uh, you know, they have made cutting edge scientific innovations and so there's the need to encourage uh, more women and girls to go into, into STEM. For example, the last convocation at the University of Lagos, the best student was a female student in science. Even in Lagos State University, the best student two years ago was a mathematics student, a female student. So we should encourage women because when we have more women in these areas that we always think they are male dominated, that will lead to economic development and economic recovery because women are agents of change. All right, so um, there are also some other arguments uh, that um, features' role in perpetuating or changing gender norms could also be an issue. Uh, where you have a study revealing that issues of teacher negative attitude and poor approach to teachings are insensitive to girls and needs, and therefore uh, the approach actually needs to change. Some others have also said that um, you, you don't seem to have like a role model, and so if you look at those schools, you seem to have more teacher, I mean male teachers than female teachers, and this also could also be uh, contributing to having more of girls involving in uh, science and related courses. Do you agree with this postulation? I don't agree with your postulation. Not mine. Because, uh, uh, they are not my postulations. They are arguments, you know, for those who are, you know, yeah. looking at the course of involvement of women in the issue of science and technology. Well, I don't totally agree because in Nigeria, the teaching profession, we have even more women, more women than, than men. Men prefer to go into business and uh, other, other things. If you go to a secondary school, we have more female teachers. But if it's uh, so, uh, in, in, in science, in science, uh, in the Anawatasha institution, it's more male dominated. And that is why the Organization for Women in Science uh, will serve as mentors and will know to mentor these students right from the secondary school days 
and encourage them to go into uh, science-based courses. So uh, I, 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 I agree also that uh, uh, we, we know gen gender so so we seem to be what well, we, we seem to be having a, a bit of in science technology education and maths not only but also it's well, we, we, we don't seem to be having, you know, smooth connection with Professor Maladi Okwa. Uh, it probably might be, you know, the yeah. issue of network, women not being not involved. Be, not being maybe, involved maybe. in network, <laughs> in the network, um, in, you know. I we, mean, that's on a lighter note. We, we, yeah, yeah. But, but, but it, it might be surprised that could be the reason. Yeah, I mean, you that's know? on a lighter note, you know, That could be the reason. And uh, then so, but but, in, but this is actually very important. Very important you know, this important. Uh, conversation is yes, very important. Yes. And we hope that beyond the, the 11th of February that we're able to sustain exactly. this conversation. Exactly. and you also have some deliberate efforts from relevant quarters. Absolutely. I mean, it goes beyond just saying, yeah, there's a Ministry of Information. Uh -huh. Sorry, there's a Ministry of Women Information or Women Affairs. Affairs. Exactly. And uh, what does that ministry do? I mean, what's the itinerary? What are the activities? What are the policy direction to ensure that you have women, you know, girls involved in all of this? But most, on top of the list, one of the issues she's mentioned is the issue of culture and all of the uh, religious barriers that we probably would have. Absolutely. And I think that if we actually take it from that angle, then we probably might just be making some kind of progress. progress. We live in Absolutely. a society where, I mean, there's a lot of norms. I mean, a lot of things, some parts will believe that, hey, women, uh, you belong to the kitchen, and so you have no place here. There's those girls who were stopped on the road by Governor Babajide Samolu. I don't know why I like calling his name, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we pay our taxes in Lagos, too, so. <laughs> why not? Um, um, you know, this one of them said the mother is a teacher but couldn't afford the fees the, e the Igbo girl mm. because you know she went to private school she didn't do government school and a lot of people were saying oh, the parents don't want to send their kids to government school. but the second one uh, the Hauser girl said her mother the parents can afford to take all of them to school so the boys have gone to school while she helps the mom to do her Akara business um, and so we still it's you know a lot it's of big. people have moved forward you know in Nigeria today but we still have these decisions being taken by by the family you know if if a girl the boy goes he can he can make money he can work hard and he, he has a better chance of taking care of the family we don't have money to take everyone to school so the girl can stay back if we send a girl to school she's going to go off to another man's house and she may not be sending money to us and she'll be in his house and be you know under him you know and that's the kind of thinking we have and it, it needs to stop really it needs to stop another issue also is the issue of gender acculturation so you want to also see that uh, usually when people... gender acculturation yes oh, fantastic uh... <laughs> So you want to, no, it's, it's just a simple term to describe yeah. the act. So you have a boy uh, child and you have a girl child in the house. And, you know, usually um, the way they have been, you know, the, the way they've been brought up, they have been introduced to having, uh, you know, the, the boys playing with, uh, you know, having to play with. Okay. Uh, do uh, we have a guest? I, I think we do we have do our guest back. back. Yes. Uh, Professor Malade Okwa, can you hear us, please? Are you there? Prof, Prof uh, Aile, yes, can you hear us? Yeah. Yes, fine, yes. fantastic, yes. So, so let's quickly share your thoughts on this. I mean, this was one, I w we're just having a conversation uh, right here in the studio, and the issue of gender acculturation. Do you think that gender acculturation has also contributed to not having women represented, I mean, women being represented in science and technology? Please, can you repeat that question? So the issue of gender acculturation do you think that has, has yes? Do you think that has that has contributed to having, uh, you know, the, the number of women being represented uh, less? Exactly, exactly. I can hear you. I can hear you well. So. Yeah, so, so we'd like to share your thoughts. Do you think that that has contributed? Because we constantly look at the efforts that's been made globally. Uh, we also see efforts that are being made. We're not saying that women are not, and girls are not involved in, you know, science and technology, especially, you know, from schools. But we're saying that you, if you look at the, the, the statistics, uh, juxtaposing that with that of, you know, the boys 
or the men, uh, there's no equal representation. And so the factor of gender acculturation, could that be also an issue that is contributing to having, um, you know, less representation? That is, that is uh, of, of course, very true. That is very true, especially in Africa. Women are even the, the main culprits in the homes. You see a, a woman or a woman telling the girl, come and help me in the kitchen, and uh, the boy should not work, should not do anything in the house. So right from inception, we, we, we train uh, our, uh, our girl child, uh, you know, as if they are not meant to work. They're supposed to be in the kitchen, no. So African women need to change. It, it starts from uh, our culture. And women need to change. And that is why it is uh, a day for women and, 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 and get in science. No, our mother should stop discriminating between their male child and female child. And so if we can start, uh, that, leave that problem in the world, we find that many girls should be more confident and be able to pursue certain goals and not feel intimidated. Mm. So culture is really a very serious problem. All right, uh, Prof. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Mercy asked you about you know uh, policies, and um, you know you did mention the Ministry of Women Affairs, you know, as being there. Um, do you think government at the different levels or tiers uh, is doing enough to promote the participation of women and girls in science in Nigeria? I think the, the government have been doing a lot, right from the three tiers of governments and. Uh, it's actually increasing, but in a very small, small ratio. For example, in 2015, we had 21% participation of women in STEM. It has increased to 24% now in Nigeria, even though that is not encouraging, but there's an increasing trend. The, the three areas of uh, government, they've been trying in that aspect, giving scholarship to girls and encouraging the, the girl child. And... Uh, uh, even with the, the first uh, the first ladies in most of the states, they have projects to increase uh, the participation of women and uh, and girls in, in STEM. And some of them even go out to empower women. When a woman is empowered, she will you know she won't she will even train a girl child. So this is very important. And uh, the, the 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 first ladies, the government have been doing it in their own small way, but. Those in private organizations and NGOs should also cooperate with the government so that uh, the percentage will increase and uh, you know, we, we continue to move on at a very increasing rate. Well, thank you so much, uh, Professor Omolade Okoa. Thank you for your time, although we, we have not really had like a smooth time talking uh, due to the network challenges. But we do appreciate your time this morning and all that you're doing uh, for women in science and development in Lasso. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, then. Well, that's the size of it. So, and so it, beyond um, having this conversation, yeah, like we always say, I mean, faith without works is dead, so mm -hmm. uh, let's add the works to it. Yes, and um, she's ended up saying in summary that, um, you know, society, government is doing, is doing its part. Um, they have the civil... Uh, or non-governmental actors, organizations like hers doing their part. I mean, um, so the societal norms and the values and the family, you know, we need to change the mentality. Well, she, uh, it's interesting, she said women or mothers are the biggest culprits, you know, you know um, discouraging their daughters from getting to these perceived male-dominated fields. And I think we need to change that. We need to make sure that our families, parents, mothers and fathers encourage their daughters. You know, but I think that a major issue would be the interest. You know, not just girls, but um, young people are basically losing interest in, in science. Mm. Yeah. All right, we, we have to move on. Um, we apologize for technical issues, but we have more interesting conversations coming ahead. We look at the latest in what can be called Fuelgate, the bad petrol saga in Nigeria. We'll be right back. Stay with us.